I think it's just not being mindful of what goes in your cart and then how much that ends up costing you in the long run. You've got to focus on the protein cost of your meal because it's the most expensive part. Sauces, whatever else you're adding in, usually are going to be on the cheaper side, especially if you're more from scratch cook. The easiest example is like, don't buy honey mustard. You have honey, you have mustard, and you probably have vinegar, equal parts honey and mustard, a splash of vinegar, whatever you're putting it on. Done. Whew, grocery budgets, inflation, there's some really annoying stuff going on right now, and I am here for it. You are listening to the Healthy Parenting Handbook podcast. It's just the thing we said we all needed when we first became parents. I don't know if you said it, but I said it. Where's the handbook for this? And honestly, it feels like in these times of rising grocery prices, we need a new handbook. We need a handbook for how to shop and how to meal plan and how to feed our family without going under. I've heard from a couple people in our Kids Cook Real Food community lately who are saying, you know, ugh. Katie, I used to shop this way and I just can't anymore. I've had to reduce my standards. I've had to cut back on some of the wholesome you know, produce that I used to buy because I just can't afford it anymore. Our guest today is Erin Chase from $5 Dinners and she is going to open up your eyes, I think, to a new philosophy. I hope it's a new philosophy, something that will work for you to cut that grocery budget. Erin Chase is on a mission to help busy, overwhelmed home chefs learn to spend less money on groceries, and get organized in the kitchen. We also talk a lot about teaching kids to cook and passing on these grocery budget values and philosophies to them. Beyond the money savings, Erin has helped many people come to enjoy cooking again and help them stop feeling stressed and overwhelmed with feeding their families every single night. She lives with her husband and four hungry growing boys that we will talk about in San Antonio, Texas. You can find more information about Erin at $5dinners.com. I am your host, Katie Kimball from Kids Cook Real Food. And in the Healthy Parenting Handbook podcast, I bring together experts from all sorts of fields, health, parenting, nutrition, and grocery budgeting to help you parents who really want to raise healthy, independent kids get the information you need. Parenting is the toughest and most important job in the world. And we wear a lot of other hats as we run our household. Thank you for joining me to consult this healthy parenting handbook, your guide to raising kids intentionally. Find the show notes for this episode with every resource Erin and I mention at kidscookrealfood.com slash 027. Well, Erin, welcome. What a joy to finally get to talk to you after a bajillion years running in the same circles online. Yes, you too. This we're like the grandmas here, the on, the online grandmas, <laughs> the OGs, literally online grandmas. I know. Not really. I, we're really still twenty nine. We're still twenty nine. We promise. Yeah, I don't know how much longer we can get away with that one, but <laughs> I mean, a few more years, maybe. <laughs> it is funny to in real life to say to people, "Well, yeah, I've been online since two thousand nine, or in your case, two thousand eight, and they go, "Oh, mm-hmm. like yeah. that's a long literal time. grandmas." <laughs> And do you ever still feel like a rookie because everything is still changing and you're having to figure out new stuff all the time? I don't think it makes me feel like a rookie. It's more like, I just want to figure this out quickly so we can take advantage of it. Like I've always been, I'm trying to stay ahead of the curve. Like what's the next thing? And only a few times has that really worked out in our favor. Um, You know, you have to kind of, it's hard to judge like which of these things do you chase down, but it kind of makes it fun. It keeps it interesting. So. It's definitely interesting working online. Well, today we get to talk about really, I think, an always changing world, like the grocery store and couponing and prices, unfortunately, are always changing. And so I think that is going to lend to your authority in the space that you're you're ready for new things all the time and you're adapting. You're not sitting back and giving advice from 2008. But but catch us up a little bit on on how you got started online way back then. And what did you do before? you know, you did this whole internet thing, which was clearly not what you wanted to be when you grew up because it didn't exist. It did not exist. However, I'm real grateful for it. So that is, uh, that is this, the the accidental entrepreneur, the accidental online entrepreneur, we both are probably. Um, I started looking at how we can cut our grocery budget back in the summer of 2008, which was a very similar um, economic climate that we were in now. Back then, it was uh, the real estate crisis. Today, it's the inflation crisis. A little different. Same problem. Different uh, causes. And so I really kind of feel like we're back in 2008, uh, where everybody's panicking and trying to figure out 
where we can cut on um, groceries. And so we did that. Um, I was not working at that time. I let me, I always say that. And then I'm like, hang on, let me rephrase that. I had two little tiny dudes at that time. So I was working as their mom. That is a job. Um, and I, and, and Steve had a long commute and we needed to cut the gas because that was the price that was the highest at that time. It was, I think, over four, almost $5 a gallon in Ohio, which, you know, doesn't, Heartland doesn't usually get as affected as the coast. But anyways, so I decided to take it on myself. My job, in addition to taking care of the boys, was to spend less of our, like, just get real intense with our overall budget. So I'm looking at everything and we're look. and this was back when it was pay as you go cell phone, like you paid for how you, how much you've used it. This is, we're grandmas, y'all, I told you. So, so. Then I'm looking at everything. I'm like, the last option to cut is food. We didn't go out to eat a ton. Um, And so I just started getting super intentional with what I was buying, when I was buying it. Back then, coupons were more of a thing, not so much anymore. Or they're different now. And so just started doing that. And I'm sharing my successes on what was then my family blog. And my sister was like, I just want to see pictures of the boys. Thanks. And so I moved. Oh, which she was right. I can attribute all my success to her. She'd claim it. So she, so I moved that the, the grocery and recipe stuff over onto what is now $5 dinners. And the rest is here we are 16 years later. Yeah. And you know, and you are very good at teaching. I think, you know, your, Aww. your bio is super humble, Erin, because you don't say, Oh, I've been on this national show oh. often on the <laughs> news, but like you, you really teach people at a national level. What are like super quick snapshot, like favorite appearance or favorite topic to teach on specifically? We have, I've done lots of national media spots, um, just with different promotions of some kind, whatever it may be. I think my favorite thing, really, it's if you learn one thing from me, just one thing. It can be a cooking hack from one of the little one minute cooking videos that are so popular right now. It could be a grocery savings hack. It could be a mom hack. I don't care. I just want you to learn one thing that is because that means that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And that means that I'm having a positive impact on you and your life. And that means the world to me. And I am honored and humbled to get to do this every day. But my favorite thing to teach on is like how and when to grocery shop. TV is hard because you have three minutes or maybe five if you're lucky. Seven if it's a real, real, you know, big show. And it's hard to get those that much into that space. So I think um, one quick cooking hack or, you know, when, when and what to buy. I think would probably be my two favorites, which I think we're going to get into both of those here. So yeah. Yes. I'm, that's what I'm hoping too, that by the end of this podcast, you know, when it flips to the next podcast on your player that you're like, Ooh, practical, I can do that. Yeah. Today. Um, and, and people love seeing like behind the scenes, right? So that's kind of why I asked that question, but also let's talk a little bit about your family, because I know that you know, in our audience, we have a lot of people with picky eaters. We have a lot of people with crammed schedules. They don't feel like they have any time to sit down to to dinner and they might have athletic kids who are just consuming calories like they're going out of style um, and food allergies too. We attract a lot of people with, with tricky diets. And so if you can tell us a little bit about your family makeup so that people know, Oh, like Erin's just like me. She's got, it's got all that going on too. Oh yes, I am. And here's how and why. Are we ready? <laughs> Are we ready okay, for this? Sit down, people. This could be this could be a, a whole hour right here. No, all right. I got f- I have four boys. My oldest is a freshman and co- just finishing up his freshman year in college. He is, I would say, my picky eater on the just he just likes certain things. He's just like certain things certain ways. I think we could probably label him a sensory picky eater. It's not a behavioral power struggle thing. It's just, it's a sensory, he's been to occupational therapy, yada, yada. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, also super active, super high metabolism. Just, you know, number two, uh, is a junior in high school. He plays football and basketball and it is like just shoveling food in his mouth. Here, take this protein bar all the time. Um, and he's, Tall and skinny and super high metabolism, you know. Child number three, he is, I would say, the most like average 
eater, although he's in the middle of his puberty growth spurt, you know, the one where they grow five inches. So that's a fun thing. And also shoveling protein bars, like just, just put it in your bag, keep it with you. You never know when you're going to need it. Yeah. Cause um, they're always hungry, then, right. Oh my gosh. It's, I literally can see, like, I'm like you, half an inch last night. You can see it overnight when they're in this puberty growth spurt. Uh, okay. And then number four, he is my most challenging. I think Katie probably knows he has pot and mast cell activation syndrome and mast cell activation syndrome for him shows up in the form of food intolerances, which I treat as allergies. And he is medicated for them with a very, um, strong medication. So he has like, we have to treat his as if they were anaphylactic. And, um, just even though he's on medications, he still has to be down a couple of foods and that has been a real challenge, but we've gone through it and, um, we've kind of figured out the, the best way to, I'm not a fan of short order cooking just because it's inefficient and <laughs> I don't want to do it. Um, however, I will short order a side dish or. Um, if we need to have a different crust for a pizza, fine. Like, obviously, I have to meet everybody's dietary and food allergy restrictions. And so I try to make the whole meal, you know, work for everybody. And if there's not an option, then I'll have a gluten-free alternative. Also, because gluten-free products, while they are convenient, they're also very expensive. And so trying to balance that you know, quick convenience because we have to eat this way with everybody. I would like everybody to have the same meal, but if we have to short order cook, we do. And so there's a little bit of finagling, I guess, that goes along with that. But if I could plan, you know, accordingly, then it's a lot easier to to execute. And I don't feel like I'm spending an extra half an hour in the kitchen to make two meals. <laughs> Right. Well, and I think too, like that term short order cooking, I'm I'm not a fan either. And it, it's definitely to me has a negative connotation, but it's a hugely different thing to say, well, I'm just going to make two kinds of pasta, but we're all eating, you know, the same meal right. in looks, or we're going to have maybe a different side. To me, that's, that's just a kindness. And that's just a flexibility yeah. as opposed to right. I'm making mac and cheese for someone and the rest of the family's having chicken breast and broccoli, right? Like, right. Yeah, I exactly. Totally different thing. And you're right. The gluten-free is more expensive. So sometimes for your budget, you say, well, well, two pots are okay. I can do one more, one more dish, you know, wash one more pot. Totally. Thinking about your, you mean your whole site is called $5 dinners. And I, I've been around, you know, on the earth a little while we've seen, you know, I don't, I don't remember the five and 10, the nickel and dime stores, obviously. Those oh don't yeah. Anymore. But like dollar gone. stores in my lifetime have gone from being one dollar for everything to like a buck twenty five or two dollars or now they're the five dollar store. But your site's still called five dollar dinners, so we gotta kind of address that. Like, can you still make a meal for on. five bucks? You can a certain type of meal, and we're holding on and we're adjusting and we're helping people see that even the the strategies all still apply. Okay, that all the strategies still apply. It's just our baseline is going up and we're trying to do $5 meals. If we can't, it's okay. The intention and the kind of underlying purpose of the site is to pay more attention to your meal costs by paying more attention to what you're buying and when you're buying it so that your overall grocery budget stays in range or it doesn't go out of control, right? So the $5 mark worked for a really long time. It actually worked until about man, probably spring of 2022. It really did. It, it, it was summer 2021 that we had transitory inflation and we started tracking things. And But it was really in the spring of 2022 that everything kind of went whoop and stayed there minus a couple of individual ingredients. But food overall on the whole is up 22% in the last three years, 22%. So go back to your budget from 2021, what you're spending, add 22%, that's your new, that's your new budget, right? The idea is going to stay the same. The idea is still the same, but maybe now it's $7 dinners or $8 dinners. And Lord willing, hopefully not, we don't get to this place where now it's becomes the $5 dinners. A lot of people think it's $5 per person, so it's $20 to make this meal. I mean, please let that be in another 15 years because <laughs> eventually it might become sort of that. 
but the goal and the intention is still to help looking at your meal costs by ingredient costs that'll help your grocery spending overall and then a little bit of okay now that i've bought this on sale what do i do with it so the kind of the cooking and the and the shopping and planning kind of go hand in hand obviously so um we're going to hold on as long as we can and what if we need to switch it to <laughs> five dollars a person i hope it's in another 10 years at least goodness but the goal is still the same my intention is still the same to help you spend as little as you can while still eating well is yeah. is the idea i bet a lot of people misunderstand the five dollar dinner thing oh yeah per serving all the just time. because that's how all the yeah. like the meal prep kit places yeah. always price it x dollars per serving and some there are a lot of them are more than five dollars so those are not a good deal oh. let's just say that right no. now <laughs> Not at all. Never buy. It. Stop doing that if you're doing it. <laughs> Unless it's you're overspending on money, food, you know. Right, yeah. right. There, there is an occasion for that. I will say that there is an occasion, um, but long term, it's not a solution, especially if you're needing to save money. And I think right now, everybody. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your income is. I don't care what your life status is. It is time to be watching what you are buying mm -hmm. across the board. And food is definitely the easiest one you can control quickly whether it's going out to eat less or stop door dashing. My word, you're doubling your cost just right now by door dashing. Stop that. I am with you. And as we think about raising our kids too, I've, I mean, I've heard of teenagers who are door dashing like a smoothie or college students are they're door dashing, like not even a meal. And I just, my heart sort of like turns to dust <laughs> when I hear that. I'm like, that's not okay. Um, so thank you for saying that. I think you're well, at the right, the right can place Can I to just say why it's not okay. Please so you can, break you it down, flip, girl. You have to flip the script. You have to flip the script. Okay. It's not okay because one, it's lazy and you didn't plan ahead. Okay, fine. Okay. Well now let's look at it this way. We did have this happen. G going back to my youngest being so sick, he was hospitalized and I had two people in the family that needed a meal quickly and I was in the hospital with him. So I wasn't home cooking. Like we were kind of in a bit of a crisis mode. So I door dashed Chipotle for two people, 40 bucks. It should have been at that time, this was a year and a half, two years ago. So it should have been about 20 ish bucks total. It was literally double. So I could take that $20 and put it in a savings account somewhere. Obviously this is a crisis. I'm not saying don't door dash in a crisis, door dash in a crisis, but the think about what you could do with that money and where it could go. 5% savings account right now, right? Just be thinking about what your money, how to make your money work for you um, and, and with saving it or investing it or putting it in a high yield savings or whatever, instead of, that's what I have to do. I'm like, oh, I'll just go through the drive. I'm like, nope, I already did my drive through budget this week. I can't do that because I need that money to go into this savings account or this college kid account or whatever. So you have to flip that script so that you're motivated to not overspend when you're in an inconvenient moment, not a crisis moment. That's different. Um, so anyways, flip that script. Love it. Love it. And, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about Life Skills Now Summer Camp at the end, but I have to say there is a workshop on compound interest and how important oh, it is good. to start young and to not let yourself be paying the compound interest and credit card debts. Excellent workshop. So oh, that's awesome. for sure. For sure. And okay, speaking of flipping scripts, Erin, I could almost hear it in your voice when you were saying it's, it's, you know, that your philosophy is to inspect the price of the meal. And I'm thinking there's an instead there. What's the instead? What do people generally do when they're like trying to cut my grocery budget? Uh, I think they do the um, the dance where they go down the aisle and they pick up the things and they just put them in their cart and they're not paying attention and they think they need all these things to make this crazy elaborate meal. Mm -hmm. And then they get home and they already have half of it. And they're like, oh, I just spent an extra hundred dollars I didn't need to spend. I think it's just not being mindful of what goes in your cart and then how much that ends up costing you in the long run. We don't always see it right now, today, this week, even we're really bad at seeing it on the monthly level. We're really bad at seeing it on the quarterly and it's impossible to see at the annual level, unless you're a super data nerd and you are like studying your QuickBooks or whatever program you use, right? We're, we don't do that naturally because we have to eat every day because we have to cook every day because we have to go to the grocery store every week or twice a week or whatever. And so we don't like string it together. And then we get to the end of the month or the quarter of the year. And we're like, Hey, what? Oh, okay. Um, so it's just a matter of just doing it because we have to eat every day 
but, and also just not being mindful of it and not, and or not tracking it either. I think it's another big one for people. Yeah. Well, it's brilliant to look at the per meal cost. It's kind of like when you are working on a big project, you know, a college student has a massive project that's a two month thing or, or us as entrepreneurs, we have to break it down into little bits. We can't just say, well, I have a deadline, you know, three months from now for this job, I'm just going to work on it. Ooh, like you're not going to make it unless you have those milestones and in your system, each meal is the milestone. I think a lot of people look at each product as the milestone. Like, ooh, this is on sale. Therefore, if I buy it, I am now saving money. But I, but that's right. why I think yours is like flipping the script where you're saying, well, you, you might be saving money, but you also might be able to find something less expensive that fits a better meal for the purposes. So give me some examples, Erin, of meals you make for five bucks still or pretty doggone close and like <laughs> Maybe where you go over the budget purposely or because of the, the inflation monster. Oh, inflation monster. Okay. What is still working is rice and beans is at this point. You used to be able to do a rice and beans meal for 2 or $3. Now that's like 4 or $5. And that's adding quite a bit of flavor. You know, rice is still really expensive. Brown rice, super cheap. Get it at a five pound bag. It's cheaper per ounce, you know, depending on your grocery store, even bigger. Looking for the best per, you know, ounce prices for ingredients like that, that are wholesome. Um, whole brown rice um, and then beans. I just, I buy dried and cook my own. I'll sometimes do canned if I'm mixing them in with something. I'll also do a big batch of dried beans and then save them uh, in the freezer in smaller like can size portions essentially. So if I want to drop some pinto beans into a chili or black beans in with um, like ground beef to stretch out um, like a, a pasta skillet or something like, or taco meat or something like that. Um, and so just being even those little tiny things, if you can do them regularly, they do add up over time. I used to kind of, I don't want to say nickel and dime, but basically nickel and dime every little ingredient. Now it's just become just the way that we, we cook. And so uh, I also think it comes down to balancing the convenience and the savings. There are some times where you need convenience um, and it's, and it's worth that, you know, kind of cost, extra cost, I guess. But then there's other times where it's like, just throw some beans in the instant pot, freeze them or use them, right? So, you know, it, it kind of comes down to that. So rice and beans, you can definitely still do for under $5. And that's adding flavors, you know, whether it's tomato paste and some cilantro and some spices from the cabinet. You can even do, I, we also love like black beans and mango. So I'll just use a little frozen mango and black beans unless they're, it's mango season and you can get a good ripe uh fresh mango. So it's just a little bit of mix and match with kind of what's on sale, what's in your pantry, rice and beans, flavor them up how you like. Inflation wise, the next biggest thing to tackle is the protein cost of your meal. Mm -hmm. You've got to focus on the protein cost of your meal because it's the most expensive part. Um, sauces or whatever else you're adding in usually are going to be on the cheaper side, especially if you're more from scratch cook. The easiest example is like don't buy honey mustard. You have honey, you have mustard, and you probably have vinegar, equal parts honey and mustard, a splash of vinegar, whatever you're putting it on. Done. Right? So if you can kind of use what you have, it's going to taste better too, I promise. <laughs> you you know, I know you know. So you kind of use what you have to one, be healthier and two, not have to buy more than you need to because you already have these ingredients. You can mix it together. Um, I haven't bought taco seasoning in a long time because it's real easy to make, make it in a big batch, store it in the freezer in a glass mason jar, right? Mm -hmm. So little things like that, that you can do make a big difference. Okay. Back to the protein costs. See, I told you I could talk about this all day long. So, <laughs> protein costs are the most expensive part of the meal, whether it's chicken, ground turkey, ground beef, regular turkey, like a, a three pound turkey breast, um, a whole chicken, whatever it is, rotisserie chicken. It's going to be the most expensive part because you can piece together and whatever produce is on sale, frozen vegetables, um, organic frozen vegetables from the warehouse store, the cheapest, you know, kind of, you can kind of work the system that way. But the protein costs, 100% only focus on that. If you learn anything from me, get the protein when it's on sale. And then we would recommend to, you know, make freezer meals out of it. That's a big part of what we do. And what I teach is, you know, get, you know, six packages of chicken if it's on sale or if the warehouse store price is better than your re store's regular price, regular store's regular price, uh, then go ahead and get the warehouse and that's a big pack. So put it into freezer meals. Do not put the package of chicken 
or beef roasts or whatever into the freezer in its package. Please don't do that. You're setting yourself up for success. You're not going to, for failure, you're not going to use your, your, oh, what do I do with this frozen chicken in here? How do I thaw it? How do I, what am I going to cook with it? Take it out of the, that, you know, store packaging and put it into something to make freezer meals later. You're setting yourself up for success. So I think the protein cost is what matters most. So either getting it on sale, getting it enough, getting enough to last until the next sale, probably going to be six to eight weeks later, depending on the store or getting it from the warehouse store. And that's generally what I do is buy meat from the warehouse store because price point wise, it is cheaper than your grocery store's regular price, but a little bit more than when it could go on sale, but not all stores have great sales. So you kind of have to do a little bit of, of studying the, the prices in your area. But if you're going to study anything, just start or start with the meat prices and then go from there or, or just do the meat prices because that's where you're going to see the quickest amount of savings because it's so expensive and the sales can bring that price down so much. Just quickly interrupting, which is not a very good life skill, is it? We should teach our kids not to interrupt. I have to tell you about Life Skills Now season three happening June 24th through 28th, 2024. Life Skills Now has been an incredible virtual summer camp completely free. The moment you register, you get access to 13 workshops that you can use all the way until June. And then the 24th to the 28th, we host 100 plus virtual workshops teaching kids ages five to 18, hands on and minds on life skills. Categories include entrepreneurship, communication, tech savviness, uh, hands on like woodworking, cooking and gardening. It's, um, It's out of this world. And I just have to give you a couple previews of what your kids will get to learn. They'll get to learn how to be polite, how to start conversations, a couple different videos on making snacks and breakfast, and even how to break down a whole chicken from a guy who's a huge wilderness expert and reality TV show participant. We're taking you into the workshop to make a pencil holder and also for our teens to learn to use a power drill. In finances, we're talking about compound interest and teaching kids how we pay for things, cash, cards, clicks, taps. What does it all mean when we can't always see money changing hands? And then we, we have a lot of mental stuff too, like overcoming your power blocks, setting goals for teens, um, creating a clutter-free study zone and why that's going to make a difference in your kids' focus as they're working. We also have stuff for you, the parents, in our preschool track and our parenting professional development track, as well as our neurodivergent track for families. And you know what? It's at the bottom of my list, but it should never be last. We have a wellness track too, but that covers both physical and mental wellness. And I just used uh, Dr. Jihan's, one of her tools to stop being nervous with my little one this morning because he has his standardized testing. Life Skills Now season three is going to be amazing. I know I've talked too long, but I'm just so pumped about the depth and breadth of all of these workshops go immediately to kidscookgrowthfood.com slash life skills. Sign up your whole family. It's free. You can get started on 13 workshops right away. And I'm so excited to share that with you. Yeah, where to start for the biggest impact is a huge tip. And you you hinted at another tip, Erin, when you talked about adding kidney beans to cut the meat in a meal. Do you do that a lot where you figure out how to use less meat in X dinner? All the time. Yeah. It, it, for us, really, it's more like adding more protein to what, you know, because it's going to be a pound of whatever or, you know, two pounds, depending on what, what I'm cooking with. But yeah, if I could throw beans into chili or into some sort of a, a ground turkey or ground beef pasta skillet, a soup, um, you know, pinto beans, white beans in with like a white chicken chili, anything like that, it, that we're going to we're going to stretch it out as as much as we can. Um, it stretches the protein and it stretches, you know, the meal. The easiest one to do that with, I think, is black beans or pinto beans with taco mm-hmm. meat, um, because then it essentially it doesn't quite double, but pretty close to doubles the amount that you have to like fill up your tacos or burritos. Yeah, absolutely. We actually use lentils to oh, stretch our it. taco meat. Yeah, we go about one to one, and we sprout them first. So yeah. we try not to do it with company because they have these little these little sprouts, <laughs> which. <laughs> look, uh, visually, they look a little bit alarming if you're not ready for it. They mostly fall apart when they're cooked. But yeah, sprouted yeah. lentils are kind of funny Love looking. Love that. But yeah, we, and we do go one to one. So instead of two pounds of ground beef for taco night, it's one pound of ground beef. And that's huge. Mm-hmm. That's a massive saving. Um, so totally. what is your system, Erin, for calculating 
that price per meal? Like, are you a math major? Because I'm an English major. So help my numbers brain out. I have a numbers brain. I can say that it it came, I think, from my grandfather. He was a mathematician. It kind of started out as a game and then it sort of turned into, I don't even know how to describe it, like a Rolodex of prices. And it's now like just mainly what we buy. Like I know it's cheaper to buy. It's less like the actual number now as more like, oh, it's cheaper for me to buy gluten-free pasta from Trader Joe's Mm -hmm. than it is from online or from my local grocery store, right? So now it's more of like, I just know where to buy stuff because I've studied the prices at some point and they also have been changing. So (laughs) to keep up with the changing prices in the last two years has been has been a lot. It's like, what's the price of eggs this week? What's it this week? I mean, it just, it's constantly changing. So now I I keep more of the Rolodex of like the things that we buy, this is where I'm buying them from. So I think that it just, it started out as like a game and a challenge. And it just sort of turned into this, like, let me see how I can mix and match this, you know, ground beef that maybe was on like a store special that I have to cook today, but it was 25% off. Okay. I'm going to buy that. Okay, well now well, this is this would have been prices from a few years ago. Well now that's only two dollars and forty nine cents for this pound, so that's half of the meal cost. What can I add to it? Okay, pasta's probably about fifty cents because I always get pasta when it's either on sale or bogoed or whatever coupons back in the day. Now it's more bogo stuff. And then you know what? Can, okay, let's do some sort of a pasta skillet with this. What can I add to it? Okay, I've got 59 cent tomatoes in the pantry. We're just going to do a super simple Italian pasta skillet, add my own Italian seasonings, done, right? Cheese or no cheese, depending on sprinkle of Parmesan, that's cheap. So that right there, plus maybe a dollar frozen vegetables or whatever it may be. So that's four fifty, five bucks yeah. with the tomatoes, right? So it's just sort of like a, a little, yeah, I totally just broke it down there, like with a random pasta, Italian pasta skillet. <laughs> But, um, you know, and those prices would be a little more. So now we're looking at more like three ninety nine a pound for the meat. You know, it's a little bit higher. So let's get it to seven. That's fine. But that the purpose is the thinking about how those ingredient prices mix together, whether you got it on sale or, you know, you get the meat, at, you know, at, at some sort of a store, dis- store level discount, which that's going to be very, you know, by store. So it just kind of how it pieces together. And thinking about how that works at the individual meal cost, then if you can think, do that kind of long term, you'll see like, okay, day to day, meal to meal, day to day, week to week, month to month. And you're like, oh, I just saved, spent $300 less this month than I did last month. It happens all the time. Which is so exciting. It kind of sounds like for people just starting out, like when you were talking it, I almost felt like you had a, a $5 bucket. You were like, fill it with the protein and how much what's my head's room? And oh, if the protein is too much, you could do a half a pound of ground beef and a can of kidney beans. And now you're, you know, cut and fill like that was like, I'm, I'm visual. So that was my picture in my head as you were talking. I'm like, oh, she's like kind of filling that bucket and seeing when she gets to the ceiling of five bucks. (laughs) I love that. So like, okay, so you probably know the rocks. This is more of a business thing, but rock. Mm -hmm. So the big rock that you're adding to the jar you add first is the protein. And then you start adding the little rocks, the little, the medium sized rocks. And then you add the pebbles at the end. The pebbles are going to be spices, maybe minced garlic, little, little bits of things that you are, you know, got in a, in a bulk, you know, big jar of minced garlic, and you're just using a little bit at a time. Um, So yeah, I love that analogy. That's fantastic. And I'm guessing when it comes to spices and minced garlic and stuff that you probably wouldn't tell people, let's divide that out and figure out how many teaspoons are in, you know, what you purchased, but more like make sure you're buying those things as inexpensively as possible, which does probably mean bulk. Whenever you buy bulk, make sure you can use them and then, you know, have like 25 cents left in your, in your budget to account for all of that, as opposed to writing everything down or having a spreadsheet of your Italian seasoning per teaspoon, right? because that's just going to be too tedious. Yeah. Any of those smaller things that you're buying, like, especially spices, I just, I used to price out everything and it, I'd have, I've stopped doing that, but I would just put three to five cents on each one of those as just kind of like, here's how we round it out because you do have to spend money on those things, but it's not that me spending money on it this week only affects this week. That spice, especially if it's a bigger jar, you can do if you warehouse shopper, that's going to last up to a year, depending on what it is and how often you're using it. And so I think it is important to be mindful of there are those little smaller costs, but overall they're not going to add a ton to your grocery budget in the long run. 
So when we think about parenting and passing this on, obviously part of parenting is the the shoveling of the calories into the child and trying to keep them both nourished and healthy. But the part of it is like, how do we pass this on to our kids? So I would love to hear about how your boys help in the kitchen and, and maybe how you discuss the budget part, just because, I mean, my audience is pretty good at getting their kids in the kitchen, but this is a whole other layer of, of what you're doing with the budget. I think it's just involving them on the, on the planning side, like before you get into the kitchen and, and looking at, okay, this is how much we're spending. This is how I do shopping lists. This is how I plan um, what I'm going to buy. Right. And just making sure that they're aware of like, oh, that actually costs a lot of money. Hmm. Thanks mom. <laughs> you know? So I think it's, it's part of it is, is involving them on that. And then part of it's just talking about, okay, this is why we're adding beans to the chili or to the pasta skillet or we're to the taco meat or whatever. Like this is why that, that why we do that and, and showing it and talking about it, I think is really important. And they, they'll just pick up these little nuggets. And when it comes time for them to get to that point in their life, when they're going out and shopping and cooking and stuff on their own, then it's like, Hey, what do I do about that again? How, remind me how we did this. And you know, cause there's a little, little gap when you're cooking somewhere new at college or I, you know, as a young adult or whatever. And so um, but, but it's just kind of, I think at this point, it's kind of planting the seeds and then, you know, showing and demonstrating and having them in the kitchen there with you, I think is really important. It like leaves that knowledge there in the back of their brain that there's a question they need to ask. There's something they yeah. need to do with budget yeah. as opposed to, I want a smoothie. I'm going to door dash it. You know, um, ah, I know you and I are both like, not my yeah. kid. We actually, my kids don't often get to see the grocery shopping process because they're in school, but we happened to be all in a grocery store just yesterday. And my nine-year-old was like, what, how much, what was that number? How much did you pay? Whoa. <laughs> and then we're doing night prayer. And he was like, and God bless mom's business. Cause she just spent a lot of money feeding us today. And it was so sweet and cute, but also kind of eye-opening like, oh, you know, we, we do need to narrate. We need to narrate what we do just like we did when they were toddlers, right? That's how they learn language. We just sort of like narrate everything we do when they're infants and toddlers. Don't stop parents. Do right. That yeah. When Cause tweens and teens. Yeah. Cause they're not learning this in school. No. They're not learning money management in school. They're not learning how to cook. They're not learning how to manage finances. I think it's really important to have those conversations to let them kind of see kind of behind the scenes things that they're not normally paying attention to um, because they'll have those moments like your, your kiddo did. Absolutely. So you almost, I, I don't know if you tried to set that up, but that's what we do in life skills now, right? We teach the thing, we teach the budgeting and the entrepreneurship, but it's literally like, what are you, what are they not getting in schools? Let's do that in the summer in a really fun, engaging way. Erin, can you just preview what your workshop is in life skills now and how it's going to be a game changer for families? So we're going to cook this meal now, and then we're going to put another version away into the freezer so that you have an easy option to cook later is the idea. So you're doubling your food and cutting the time because I'm all about efficiency. Um, efficiency with budget, which is what we've been talking about, but then also with the execution in the kitchen. Um, and if your kiddo and you want double the bonus points in this one, you would work with a recipe that your family likes and you would get the meat, whatever the meat is, whether it's the ground turkey, the chicken breast, the chicken thighs, whatever, you would get that on sale and then you would make the meal now. You would double it for later. So you're saving later and you're saving now. So that would be the ultimate challenge uh, and the ultimate alignment of what we're talking about here in the podcast and then what happens in um, my lesson. Yes, it's so cool. So it's, a, it's just a great primer on like basically how to make a simple meal, how to think about, you know, maybe ma adapting a little, making it your own, but also how to freeze or cook, which that's where it's such a game changer for families is how do you it's called taco soup and how to cook double the food in half the time. How do you cook double in about the same amount of time as you would cook one meal and then put that freezer to your advantage? You know, we live in the age of electricity. Let's yeah. let's use it. <laughs> yes. Amen. So it, it's going to be fantastic. I know the kids every year at Life Skills Now Summer Camp, they love the food stuff because that's so it's that they eat three times a day, right? Four or five times a day. So making the food and having autonomy and agency in that process is so great for the kids. They have so much fun trying new recipes. So we always, we always kind of pack that, that food section, although we have a hundred workshops this year. Wow, so there, yeah, there's, 
no shortage of something for every Lots kid, every do. personality. Yes. For sure. Now let's talk about how you teach your kids, Erin, because you have shared with me that you have this fantastic four-step sort of letting go process for parents. And I want them all to hear it right from you. Taco soup. Let's just use that because it's what's in the workshop and it's the easiest example for this. So no matter the age of your kid, they could be five, they could be 15, doesn't matter. They're going to make the taco soup four times. And the purpose of that is to practice it, is to get good at the skills and to eventually, in the case of taco soup, because it's so easy, memorize how to do it. Now, you're not going to do this four nights in a row. Don't worry. You're not eating taco soup every night. Maybe once a week, once every two weeks, however it fits into your schedule. So the first time they cook it, you are literally going to be standing next to them, showing them how to open a can. If you're cutting bell peppers, showing them how to cut a bell pepper, holding their knife properly, all of those cooking skills, depending on their age, right? So you're going to be side by side next to them in round one. In round two, you're going to be in the kitchen watching, doing something else. Maybe you're baking something, but you're right there in case there's an emergency, in case they need anything, but you really want them working on it their own as much as possible. Mom, help me do this. Well, let's see if you can figure it out. Let's start. You do, you do it. Don't intervene unless you absolutely have to, unless there's a crisis. The third time is you're going to be um, maybe in the living room, listening to a podcast, reading a book, folding laundry, whatever you do. Who sits down and listens to a book in the middle of the day? Not me, but whatever you do. <laughs> You're going to be nearby, but not in the kitchen the third time. The last time they make it, you're going to show up at the dinner table and dinner's going to be done. And so by stepping them through this, I'm hands on with you right now in the kitchen, making this, making sure you don't cut yourself on a can lid or whatever. The second time you're nearby, the third time you're in the other room, the fourth time you show up for dinner and everybody's happy. They win. They get that sense of independence. You've taken... But, but you have going back to breaking it down into steps. That's what you have to do. You have to break it down into a little bit. You get overwhelmed. How is my kid going to go to college not knowing how to cook? There you go. Now you know. It's so nice to have that number four, too, like four times to mastery. And, and I know I would add to that that we, when our kids first start taking over a meal, we kind of let them make the same recipe every week. So it's mm -hmm. pizza or it's tacos. And they really do get mastery and that memorization by halfway through the year. Or the end of the year, and you could cut that in, you know, two semesters or something. If the family is sure. tired of tacos, although that's not my family, we <laughs> not us like every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was our it. twelve year old this year. Twelve year old took over tacos from my husband, and it was very similar to what you said, just kind of passing it on, being nearby, and then being in the house available. So that's a fantastic, like letting releasing the apron strings process. Thank you for breaking that down. Erin, you said sure. at the top that you wanted everyone to learn at least one hack that they could remember. Hopefully that's already happened multiplying in spades, right? But but let's end with a super practical step. Like where would you want someone who maybe hasn't paid any attention to their grocery budget or, or tried, but they're like floundering, they're not figuring it out very well. Where should people start first step when they finish this podcast? The protein cost, hands down. I mean, I, sometimes I feel like I'm a walking Pinterest board. But, but when it comes down to it, like the protein cost is what matters the most. It's where you're going to see the biggest and fastest impact in your grocery budget. If you can be consistent with getting it when it's you know cheapest, if you throw the package in the freezer, fine, that's fine. Make a freezer meal out of it if you can. But ultimately the bottom line, literally the bottom line of your grocery budget is getting the protein either when it's on sale or getting it in bulk from the warehouse store to maximize the savings as much as possible. And then that compounds that savings compounds over time. So go watch, you know, watch the compounding interest video. The same thing applies with your savings. Your, your savings will compound when you start to make these little changes with what you're buying and when you're buying it. It's so true. And you give people a lot of hope too, I think saying, you know, I, I don't focus on all the little things anymore. Like now it's just part of you because it becomes a habit and it does become so much easier. It's just your way of life. And, and even right. as your boys have grown up and are, are eating more protein, I got to give a quick shout out to your new book about feeding teenage boys on a budget. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that, especially for the boy moms out there? Although lots of girls need lots of nourishment too. Oh my gosh. I, if I would have titled it feeding teenagers on a budget, but I have boys and all of us are on the cover. So I did feeding teenage boys on a budget, but I know some girls that could eat my boys under the table, especially active high metabolism, like... <laughs> 
sporty, you know, whatever it is you're doing, just go, go, go. So um, we, we have some friends like that. But the idea here is I put together 90 recipes that are hearty, healthy, eight servings. You could easily double it if you need to, depending on how many teens you're feeding. Uh, but I doubled the servings from our normal amount just to get more quantity into the recipes, the recipes that my kids have eaten over the years. And then I also have in the in the front part kind of a guide, um, some of the things we've talked about here and some like just funny things about boys and feeding them and not losing our minds every day doing that. <laughs> Love it. And, and so it's a cookbook. So it's a printed cookbook or a digital cookbook for parents to use or for the teens to cook for themselves or where does that fall? Both. We have the printed te- feeding teenage boys on a budget. And then as I was working on putting it together, I'm like, I need to do something for the kids, the teens to learn how to cook. So we pulled um, our favorite recipes from the book, put them into kind of a YouTube shorts sort of cooking lesson situation with a with a, a digital download that goes with it, plus some little things about little products to go with it. Like, here's what you need to clean up the kitchen, son. Here's a little scrubby to clean the kitchen. So we kind of try to pull it together uh, with a bundle of products that would be make the most sense for teens cooking and teens cleaning up after themselves in the kitchen. That is so cool and and just so appropriate. Like teens want to watch these little short videos, right? And uh, yep. yeah, I'm very excited to to share that with our audience. And honestly, we have a lot of people in my audience with more than two kids because people with more than two kids need their kids to cook more than the people with you know with one child. Their their schedules are just a little bit lighter. So the eight servings yes. alone is I'm like music to my ears. Like I don't have to do math before I do dinner. Yay. <laughs> no math, no math. <laughs> That's fantastic. Erin Chase of $5 Dinners. Thank you so very much for being here on the Healthy Parenting Handbook, helping us to cut that budget and nourish our kids. Love it. Thanks, Katie. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Healthy Parenting Handbook podcast. I hope your brain feels fed and your heart feels full. And that you feel connected, knowing that there are other parents on this journey with you. We're just trying to raise healthy, independent adults. And you know, the next time you think, man, there is no handbook for this job. Now there is the Healthy Parenting Handbook. Look up the podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts. Please leave a review, my friends, as that helps other parents who need this information to find us. And of course, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. That's a huge help. You can also look for our shorts as a reel on Instagram at Katie Kimball Kids Cook or subscribe to the Healthy Parenting Handbook Shorts channel on YouTube. You'll get those bite-sized portions of healthy parenting advice.